another wonderful episode here of the Retro Gamers Podcast, which is going to sound a little different this week. Larry here. Now? Do I do it now? Uh, do it now. In, 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 uh, Frank insert. here. Hey, what's going on? Uh, so I'm just being stupid. <laughs> uh, yes, that is Frank Messina from the Better Half Podcast. What's Hello, going on, Retro Gamers. Yes, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank uh, you for having me. As, as you can tell, Anthony is on assignment again this week. As is like he in uh, Japan? No, I think he's still here in the U.S. I just don't know what he's doing. What's that place, that funky chicken or yeah. f- super potato? Super, super potato. potato. You know, when I go to Tokyo in a few years, I'm definitely going to visit. Uh, well, that's, <laughs> that didn't take long. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, so. I forgot. <laughs> this is the PG podcast. <laughs> this is the PG podcast. Right. Sorry. No, that's Sorry. okay. Sorry. Hey, listen. We're good. This is what you get when you have me as a guest We're host, good. okay? And, you know, I, I wanted you on the show because you have – you um, – Listen to the episodes, yes. but you are so far behind right now. It's what's old is new. No, really, to me. and and you're like a year behind. And yeah, you talked about how like a lot of times you wanted to react or respond to things that we've talked about that way we've mentioned you. Yes, there's certain either certain games that you guys know I love or something that you uh, you'll talk about, and I'm like I'll be listening to it. And I'm like yes, yes, that's that's exactly right, and I'm like damn it, this is a year ago. <laughs> Because I'm so far, unfortunately, I'm so far behind on my podcast. But I actually just deleted a podcast from my, I unsubscribed from a a podcast from uh, my list of podcasts. Yeah. uh, Because the host was, uh, his politics were bleeding way through into them. So I had to. uh, And that's what we keep out of here. Right. I had to, uh, I just couldn't deal with it anymore because it was affecting the show. That's all right. Yeah. I I listened to podcasts to escape reality. I hear you. And his reality was becoming way too. Annoying. Well, good thing our reality is is so f- so faux. Our reality, reality is uh, eight Ugh. and sixteen pixels. <laughs> Thank you. Thank I like you. it. Hey, um, so uh, yeah, so and you can check out the Better Half podcast. And actually, myself and Frank do uh, every other Wednesday, yes. wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, but yeah, I wanted you on this week. Um, to well, a you were available, and <laughs> b um, first of all, do you want to? Do you have any? reactions or comments or anything from like a year and a half ago or a year ago episode that you want to um, you want to respond or rebute yeah um yeah well anthony uh you larry has some good jokes every now and then and and you <laughs> just they go right over your head you gotta you gotta listen up there my friend and you need to uh you need to uh you know you need to be more uh less hostile to your co-host <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, no! I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, you. Um, there was something recently with uh, uh, you were talking, I believe, about the Rampage movie. Yeah, I was trying. I went and, back and listened. Uh, I couldn't find what you, you were talking would, about. You guys, you guys had, I think, had just watched the trailer. It was the first trailer and I dropped. You yeah. were completely disappointed with the trailer. Yeah, there's another. As to do was the video I. Yeah. Uh, Movie's be- all right. Yeah, because I really wanted them to like, yeah, turn back into humans and <laughs> and and like you know walk off the screen <laughs> with their with their like you know covering their private parts. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. but, uh, yeah, no, that's where I'm about. I'm somewhere about like Christmas 2017. So, <laughs> yeah. oh, speaking of which, and we're at, uh, uh, Frank's location here, uh, studio B as we like to call it. And I am staring at that power base converter. Frank has an original Genesis power yes. base converter hooked up and working. Yeah. Um, I so cannot, I'm sorry to interrupt. I cannot find my original Sega Master System, which I know I had. Really? I believe I might have lost it in Hurricane Sandy because it might have still been at my mother's house. That's what happened to me. Um, but uh, I had it, and I had the box. So I know, I remember having I remember having the box, and I remember seeing it at my mother's and saying, I have to bring it over to Long Island, <laughs> where I live now. But at least you got the power base converter. The reason why I'm saying it is because I do actually have a couple of Master System games that I really want to play. Bring them One over. of which is actually Rampage. Okay. One of the few games I showed well, it last Rampage week. Was it Rampage for Genesis, though? It was out for everything, to be okay. honest with you. So I think I only first time I played it was on Genesis. But um, the Master System version, which was pointed out by uh, a friend of mine and a friend of the show, Mario, um, says that Mario. The, the, um, the Master System version of Rampage is like graphically superior to like the NES version. Really? And I picked it up at Game On. Because I'm like, well, that sounds pretty good, and it really the the you know the graphics on the back, the game looks phenomenal. And I showed uh, last week. Yes, we're not doing a video this week because when Anthony's not here, no one's recording. 
Um, <laughs> so I showed it last week. It's like one of the few um, Master System boxes that's not white. It's actually red. And it, okay. it stands out. And it's really, it's a gorgeous cover. Um, so I picked that up, but I want to play it. Well, I don't afterwards, have a you have system. to go look through my uh, my library there of of my Master System games. Oh, oh, I have them. They're all oh, they're man. all. Yeah, check that out. What the deuce? And my Genesis ones over there. Yeah. So my systems. If you you want me to go, I can go through my systems. Yeah, if let's you like. talk about. I, mean, I like. Um, it's almost like a, this is almost like a, um, a TRG cribs. Sure. Like sure. The the, yeah. The, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't have a uh, champagne bathtub or anything, <laughs> but. Uh, um, yes, well, right above the power converter, as you can see, I do have my Genesis. Yes. Uh, next to it is the Dreamcast. Good system. Very uh, underrated system. Underrated. Yep. I, some, of the, I, some of the great games. I, I still, to this day, I just got my son, who's six, playing Crazy Taxi. Crazy Taxi. Yeah, and I believe one of the, um, one of the uh, when you run somebody over by accident, it, was, it, goes, it says, damn it, or something, or whatever. Okay. And my son goes, oh, I can't play this. <laughs> he goes, this has had bad words in it. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, my Dreamcast, yeah, which I I, uh, I still play. Um, next, around the next shelf, uh, we have a uh, regular PlayStation. That and we, no, hold on, I just want to mention we're talking the OG design. I want to, you know what? Hold on, I want to how OG this is. Oh. Which honestly, I picked up at a yard sale. Did you really? With six or seven games for twenty bucks. Why is this still in the package? Because I, I'm waiting for you to hook this it up. This being the NES Classic, so. Frank has an original design PlayStation, not the PS1 when they made it smaller. Correct. But apparently, which I forgot about, oh, it's hooked up and I can't pull it. But nope, I do see the extension port. So you have like the original first yes. run twenty bucks system. Very good, very good. And I, I honestly, I didn't. I bought it, and I'm like, all right, I don't even know if this works. <laughs> um, and That's I bought. Why I'm always yeah, I was hesitant too, but it was. And it had like five or six games. I'm like, for the, at the very least, I know the games will be fine. Mm-hmm. So I bought it just then, and then I didn't. Then I didn't hook it up for about a year. So <laughs> it's just because you know I'm a parent and things get in the way. Yeah. So uh, next to that, I have uh, the PlayStation Two, yes, which uh, was I which I bought when I met you at um, yes, at the right. uh, Super Bowl party when I won the Super Bowl boxes and I played Grand Theft Auto <laughs> for the very first time and was instantly hooked. <laughs> um, so. Uh, so that was that, and above and again, that, I just want to say real quick, mm-hmm. uh, Frank again has the original model PS2, not the like the thin design or yes. anything. And what's cool about it, if you were to stand it up on its side, you can rotate the PlayStation logo on the front, so it's oh, it's I didn't I didn't know that. Okay, it's, it's that's, ver- that's yeah. good to know. I never I never knew that. And of course, that was uh, my DVD player all through college. <laughs> right, right. Uh, above that, on the next shelf, uh, I have my Xbox. I like how you have it set up, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next to the Xbox is my Xbox 360. Did you do this on purpose? Hold on. You have on the right side, you have, like, the, the first generation consoles, if you were the older generation consoles, and then on the left, their counterpart next gen consoles. You have OCD, You don't remember when I told you about my DVDs yeah, and my <laughs> CDs all being alphabetized and how when my wife just puts puts Field of Dreams all the way on top in the yep. A's <laughs> and I'm looking at the gap where the F is and it's driving me up a wall right now to this day because I could see it. Um, oh, yeah, look at that. Yes, I, I did that on purpose. <laughs> all right, cool. I, like, I got to break out my original Xbox. So yeah, next to my Xbox is my Xbox 360, yep. uh, which I uh, believe – no, my wife actually bought me the Xbox, believe it or not. The original Xbox. The original Xbox. Okay. She bought me when we when I moved in with her. Uh, when you were living in sin? Yes, okay. living in sin. Um, don't be jelly. Uh, <laughs> she bought me that, uh, I guess, to you know calm the savage beast because I was losing my mind out here in suburbia. Um <laughs> So then, eventually, I upgraded to the Xbox 360. Now, on the main stage, my uh, on yes. the uh, here we go on the uh, TV stand, I have my Xbox One, only on Xbox One, only on Xbox One, and my recently purchased PS4. PS4, yes, so. looking good, my friend. Yes, so uh, you're uh, you're in the now, and of course, then the NES uh, Classic Edition, which is still not hooked up, and my brother might be getting me a uh, Commodore 64. Like a full size version or the mini? Yeah, That's he has cool. one. Wow. He has all the games though. <laughs> so <laughs> I wonder if he has the same amount of games as Anthony does. Anthony's got well, a ton like I of told games. you, I, I said in a past uh, episode that I was in, we used to go to uh, um, Sisut, Sy- uh, and then yeah, there was another place on Avenue. U. Um, there was a computer store on Avenue. U. Avenue, I know, like we're going East Twenty Third Street. I 
think so. Mr. Sysut Man, we used to call him. I forgot. But we used to get the discs and we used like to burn them. I feel like that's a rude name, but okay. We'd burn them. We'd burn the discs. Even and back we'd crack then? Em. We'd crack them. Wow. We called them. We cracked them. We would, uh, you would, you would <laughs> copy. You would co- yeah. It would take like yeah. a, a day to copy it. Yeah. And then we, we would put something called Dan Incorporated in front of each. Uh, <laughs> so when you put the game in, and then we would return the game the next day, you know, so. <laughs> We don't condone that here at the Retro Gamers. No, no. I, did I say me? I said I know people who did that. <laughs> I'm not going to say my name was the Equalizer. So, so. Uh, uh, but you got a very good collection, my friend. I, I, I yeah, do. it's slowly growing. Like you know, and unfortunately, every time I listen to this damn podcast, I want to go buy more. And you know what's funny? And oh, you have one more system actually. Well, you have two more systems upstairs. You have um, the, the the Wii. All right, three more systems. The Wii. You have the ever failing uh, Genesis. What we'll call the Genesis Mini. Right, um, which I think I played three times. Uh, my son, my son, though, he plays Sonic. Sonic's a great game. Yeah, so. Um, but it's just that, that stupid thing just can't, at games cannot figure that out. Supposedly Sega's going to make their own mini. Sega. But, um, you know, Sega eventually right. at some say, point. Say it right. Uh, but Sega. you also. Say it right. You also, Sega. You will not take over my show. Sega. So you also have a Nintendo Switch. My son has a Nintendo Switch, which you are angry with him. It's actually I don't think I told that story here on the podcast. Go for on this it. podcast. So uh, we were recording an episode of the Better Half, and Frank came over to my house to record this particular episode. And um, so Frank um, brought the Switch with him, his son Switch, because and it happens every now and again. Uh, I guess his son tried to boot up the Switch, but it kind of like froze. Correct, it froze in boot up mode. Like you can tell the screen was lit, but there was nothing on it. So, all right, so I figured I'd give it a shot, give it a whirl uh, to see if I can fix it, uh, which ultimately I did, so I was happy I was able to do that. But the condition that this poor system, it didn't deserve it. He's sick. It didn't deserve it. I mean, there is a gash in the middle of the screen. It's a touch screen, my friends, as we all know. There's a, the, 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 the vent is cracked. The, 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 the game door doesn't even close all the way. I was I was very sad. I wasn't upset. I was sad. Get over it. <laughs> I can't. Uh, but What's with, your point with the Switch? Do you play any games on the Switch? Uh, yes, I. Uh, well, I usually help him with some games, but uh, he can now completely kick my butt in uh, Mario Kart. Um, Great game. Yeah, I used to be good in that, but I'm <laughs> apparently old Not anymore now. Um, and recently, uh, he's. You know, I help him with Lego City, Lego World. Um, Lego World, I don't like because it reminds me of Minecraft. Yeah, they're all, they all copy and that. And I just, yes. I hate Minecraft, and so I just have a basically a hatred for Lego World. But uh, lately, like I said, I was telling you earlier, he has this baseball game. I don't know the name of it, but yeah, basically. Yeah, you're explaining this. I'm dying to see it. Yeah, but basically, uh, I think it's a digital game. One That's of the ones you download, one of the collect. downloads, yeah. That's all I do is get digital. Um, he, uh, um. I gotta find the name of it, but basically, you are a uh, baseball player, and you have three balls, and you have to hit the balls at a certain angle to bounce them off the corners of the you know the board and mm-hmm. platforms, and you have to knock over the people standing on the platforms, or other baseball players and the umpires. But if you hit the umpires in their vest, yeah, the ball bounces off of them, so you can only <laughs> hit the umpires from behind or take out their legs. Weird. Yeah, oh, but it's great. But they always make these. These like they make these like Ugh! noises when they <laughs> fall, and my son just gets a kick out of it. So awesome. I only discovered it because apparently my wife bought him the game, but um, he needed help on a on a board, and then I basically ended up taking over the game <laughs> and played about nine levels before it was time for dinner. There you so go. <laughs> um, that's cool, and you know the reason why I'm I'm asking is because what I would like to do is, uh, and I know you're more into you know classic games. I mean, you're into the modern stuff. You play. Red Dead 2, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is kind of funny because Shadow of the Tomb Raider is, I saw it advertised for Xbox Live Gold, like two weeks after you bought it. Oh, yeah. But it's not one of the free downloads. It's just on sale for like 30 bucks. I, so. I have to tell you, I'm beyond impressed with the graphics of PlayStation 4. Oh, it's amazing. I My wife had came came down here. I mean, we're in my man cave, mm-hmm. um, and she's like, that's a movie? And she goes, that's a video game? I go, <laughs> yeah. She goes, she goes, it looks like a movie. And uh, it really is a great game. I'm only about 3 or 4% into the game because mm-hmm. there's so much. And I'm one of these players where, like, I, re- I don't want to go to the next level until I get everything. Until I get everything. How long have you been playing GTA Five? Well, I haven't played it. I'll be honest with you. I haven't played it in probably 
six months. But, wow. But, um, it's a drought. When did it come out? 2013, I a think? A while ago. I was probably paying it for about a while ago. four years. I mean, every day. Consistently, like, yeah. every day. Nuts. Until you got me hooked on another game that now I can't stop playing. <laughs> that we'll so. be playing tonight. Well, yeah. If we finish in time, we'll be playing we, tonight. <laughs> we will. So we'll hurry up. <laughs> so here's what we have. Well, what I want to uh, first talk about is the Nintendo Direct that came out this past week. Uh, Nintendo announcing some big games. I'm not going to go through all of them because I'm sure by now a lot of you are aware of some of the games. But, um, you know, I just want to mention some honorable mentions. Yes. September 17th, 2013 is when GTA 5 came out. I got it for Christmas that year. So <laughs> I've been playing for f- five years. So you've been playing for a while. <laughs> it's time for GTA 6. Let's go. Come on, Rockstar. Move your butt. <laughs> so, um, so the um, Nintendo Direct starts off with basically the reveal of Super Mario Maker 2. Uh, it's coming out on the Nintendo Switch. Of course, Super Mario Maker uh, came out originally on the Wii U, one of the best games on the Wii U. And um, for, I kind of like talking about this with you, Frank, because you're probably unaware oh. of a lot of this stuff. So No, I like I said, every time I listen to you guys, I'm learning a little bit yes. more about what's coming out yeah. and what I missed. <laughs> no, I never had Nintendo growing and, up. And you know what's interesting? With the Nintendo Switch, there are so many re-releases whether it's a re-release from the Wii U to the Switch, the Wii to the Switch, we're going to talk about later systems even older to the Switch. It's like you can you have like a second shot at playing stuff. Yes. And what's funny is though it's not the games that you're used to, the Baldur's Gate series. Oh, it's coming out on the Switch, but not Dark Alliance. Yeah, I don't want to talk about the other it. one. I refuse. To, I, I refuse to play it. <laughs> I refuse to buy it. I refuse to even even acknowledge its existence. <laughs> But you got to play part two. I want to find the creators of that game, go into their mother's basements, and smack them. <laughs> oh, not all of us live in a... Well, I live in a basement. So exactly. Super, Mario, Super Mario Maker 2, which, remember, in this game, um, basically you were allowed... Loud. You created Super Mario Brothers levels. You had full control of making a level. That must have been like... And was then, this a side-scroller? Yeah, like old school. Well, okay. like different grab. Either original that NES. That really hard. There are so, and of course, then you release them onto the internet, and you can play. Okay. Anyone can play them. Okay, I they actually, do that now. Believe it or not, I'm sorry, uh, again. No, I apologize right. for interrupting you, but they actually do that in a lot of games now. They do. Specifically, GTA. They have a uh, they have a ton of racing series games, and people, I guess, create their own tracks. Yeah, some it's of them basically are basically same same thing. Just virtually impossible. Oh, some of these are some Super Mario. Later on, go on YouTube and just search Super Mario Maker levels. Um, some like you don't you just you don't even move the character. You just launch him kind of, and Mario just on his own, and it's it's nuts. I really wasn't into creating the oh, levels. Oh, so to test it, you would just launch it, and it would it you would basically you okay. would play, and with, two, with new Super Mario Brothers two, basically it's the same mechanics with newer uh, nuances to it, and of course the ability to take it on the road. Uh, but you would sit there and you would create something, then you would play it, and if the timing wasn't right on the jump, you'd go back, you tweak it a little bit, you'd play it again. And gotcha. you keep going back and forth, and some of the levels are phenomenal. So Super Mario Brothers, uh, excuse me, Super Mario Maker Two, obviously just going to piggyback on that. Uh, one of the best games on the Wii U coming out, a new one, not a not a re release, but a new one coming out on the Switch. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. You ever play any of the Super Smash Brothers? Uh, I like I said, I never owned oh yeah right. the systems, but I did play them at, at friends' houses. Um, good game, great game. Oh, yeah. uh, you, you have nothing bad to say about that. I'm actually look, thinking about. Uh, getting it for my son for the Switch. It's a good one. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is, is very fun, easy to play. Um, and of course, it's got every character ever to appear in a Super Smash Bros. series. Um, and they announced a 3.0 update. Uh, nothing major. Of course, the first DLC character, Joker, not the Joker from DC, uh, Joker from a different game. And more Smash-themed amiibo are coming out. Oh, okay. And... If you look online, there is a Castlevania amiibo of uh, Simon Belmont that looks, and also Snake from Metal Gear Solid. Oh, I love Simon Metal Gear Belmont Solid. from uh, Castlevania. That well, look awesome. I, li- I like the Snake one. I'm gonna uh, the, the other ones. Not the the. Uh, I like Castlevania them both. one. Yeah. yeah, no, no, I like them both. Yeah, no, that ca- that snake is cool, but the, ca- the Simon Belmont one is cool. I'm still so. confused on how those work, but you could exp- you explain those. All, yeah, you know. I mean, every game, they work no, differently I know in every game. Like my son. You tap yeah, it. Yeah, you tap yeah, it on the I, I don't. Like in Super Smash Brothers, you can actually, they I'm fight with you. I'm old and technology scares me. <laughs> you can fight against them. 
Um, also, they announced Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker with new DLC. Now, again, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker uh, came out on the Wii U. Puzzle game. Very fun puzzle game. Um, when it got re-released on the Switch, me personally, I'm like, eh, I'm, you know, as much as I love upgrading, this game, I don't need to upgrade. There's a couple of new levels on the Switch, but they announced new DLC. So there's going to be even more levels, which now is going to justify me purchasing this game all over again. Um, and you can check that all out as well. Again, just running through these. Uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, The Black Order. Uh, this one I'll probably save for Anthony because he'll know more about Marvel. But the yeah. Ultimate Alliance series is really fun. Um, then that's an, a Nintendo exclusive. Nintendo's starting to get these exclusives, which they never really got before. The Switch was a game changer for Nintendo. But wasn't Nintendo always, um, and I'm, you might be talking about something different, but weren't, weren't they always uh, um, big, um, weren't they staunch In-house? about, about no, no, about um, not sharing rights or having well, exclusivity? I think they got burned because of like the Philips CDI games. Okay. Hotel Mario. Right, right. Those terrible Zelda games. Um, so, yeah, they got kind of... Um, um, but what I'm talking about is, like, Marvel Ultimate Alliance is more... That's a third-party game, but it's debuting on the Switch. Okay. So it's going to be an exclusive on Nintendo. Gotcha. And probably eventually will come out on everything else. Um, one of the biggest announcements... We actually talked about this before we started recording. Um, and it's a free download. Tetris 99. Oh, okay. This thing is awesome. Uh, it's a free-to-play game, as long as you have the Nintendo online account. And it is... The only way I can describe it is Tetris... PUBG style, where it's you versus hmm. 98 other people all playing Tetris at the same time. Um, you know, w- when you play competitive Tetris, when you clear two or more lines, you send what's called garbage to the other player. It, you know, it forces their stack up. So, you know, it pushes them to the top quicker. Oh, okay. But now you have 98 other people. Yeah, doing I don't know that if I could deal you. with that kind of pressure. It is wild. <laughs> um, actually, I got to admit, I got to give props to Brian over at. Not Brian that we know. Uh, Brian that I know over at uh, Playable Characters Podcast, who, by the way, is about to hit episode 100. So, guys, congratulations. Uh, if you don't listen to Playable Characters Podcast, it is hysterical. Go check it out. They've interviewed a lot of secondary and uh, tertiary, tertiary, sure. third sure. Um, characters from video games. And some of it is some hysterical stuff to listen to. Uh, but Brian already won. He came in at number one. One of the games he just posted. Uh, my top so far is 33, and I'm afraid to play against Anthony. Yeah, I, don't, I, I will refuse to play anything against <laughs> Anthony. I'm only if he's on my team, because I'll know he's, no, <laughs> he's the worst. Um, some re-releases that we mentioned um, that are coming out. Assassin's Creed 3 remastered, coming out on the Switch. Uh, Final Fantasy 7 is going to be coming out in late March. Final Fantasy 9 is actually available right now on the Nintendo Switch. So first time in a long time we've seen the Final Fantasy series on a Nintendo system. Uh, Yoshi's Crafted World, which looks beautiful as far as graphics are concerned. It's like all the worlds are like made out of cardboard or like everyday household items. Okay. And it it just looks interesting. amazing. That's interesting. The demo is currently available right now. You can check that out. I definitely recommend downloading it. That must have it. been fun to make. Some of these games I, do look fun to make. I mean, think of like just the, just the detail that has to go into all those items, you know. And not only that, but Nintendo is very upfront with stuff like this. Uh, they announced it recently with uh, Metroid Prime Four, and actually during the um, Nintendo Direct, they mentioned it on another game. Forgive me, I can't remember which one it was. But Nintendo will come out and they'll say, "We're in the middle of making this game, but it's not going as quickly as we thought." So either a, bear with us. We were going to release it in May. We have to release it in September. We hope, you know, you hang on. You know, we're doing the best that we can. This, that, and the other thing. For Metroid Prime 4, they had a whole special YouTube, like a video come out, basically saying, look, something went wrong, completely went wrong, and we are scrapping this whole thing. And Hmm. they are going back, like, they're deleting everything. They're going back to square run. So they're starting right from scratch. They're starting from scratch. Uh, has that ever happened before? You know, I think it has happened, but w- you no one's you ever up front. It. You don't know about it. Yeah, because sometimes wow. you hear a game and you forget about it. You know, Metroid Prime 4, people have been waiting for years, years for this this new Metroid game. And when it was announced at E3, maybe it even been announced at E3 last year, like 2017, 
the place went nuts. You know, fans went crazy. So it's been in development for so long. Hmm. They were probably right near the end, but something wasn't going the way they wanted it to go. So they just came out like, look, yeah, we're, we're, we're scrapping it. And not only that, but they're also... Wow, that's that's crazy. I mean, being that close to the end, to yeah. scrap all that Nint- manpower. And- Nintendo has always been quality, or, um, quality over quantity. And I think it's worked. I mean, as much as some people give some of the systems crap, you know, like, every, you know, the Wii U wasn't successful, though the Wii U was a very underrated game. There was a lot of awesome games on the Wii U. Um, you know, Nintendo's really always been up front. And now that they're going back to square one, and they're going back to the original publisher, or uh, the original um, uh, company that worked on the first Met- Metroid Prime, uh, Retro Studios, who we talked about a couple weeks ago. Um, so they're, they're like, you know what? Not only did we screw this up, we're going to hand it back to you know the guys and girls who did the first Metroid Prime, which was an absolute phenomenal hit on the GameCube. Right. So we'll see what happens. Um, but now there's you no know, time frame. I, I know. With, real quick with the Game GameCube, I didn't own one, but I when when I lived with Anthony, uh, you know, we we played the GameCube, and I know that didn't do well. But and I don't yeah. mean to get you no, off no, topic. No, 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 but no, 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 that's all right. They had some pretty good games on GameCube. GameCube again, you know it. I think it sold well. Yeah, it wasn't a hit. It wasn't like you know, but you know some of the games on it. Like I had not to bring up sore subject, but I had Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance <laughs> on the GameCube. Um, uh, Luigi's Mansion debuted with the GameCube. Right. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Resident Evil. It was the first time I played Resident Evil was on that GameCube. That and that, and it was like the redesigned graphics. And it scared and, the crap out of me. It sure did Still me as to well. to this day, scares yep. that and Silent Hill I don't play alone. Oh, my God. The new Resident Evil 2 is I know. scary. I know. <laughs> I, I need to end these games first before I... <laughs> don't play with the lights out. No. Um, no, GameCube had a lot of potential. Uh, and it did. Again, though, you know, what people probably didn't like about it was the little mini discs. You know, that was right. Nintendo's way of trying to, to keep piracy out. Um, you know, it wasn't a DVD player, which some people complained about. But Nintendo, again, was like, why should we put a DVD player in the GameCube right. when you probably have two or three already? Yeah. yeah. And a standalone right. DVD. Correct. So, you know, they make good choices. Look, but they were also trying... Look, they one thing about Nintendo, they were innovators. Yep. And, you know, sometimes you have to try things and sometimes they may not work. <laughs> but you got you got to give them credit for, you know, taking the risk. No, and and you have to. Sometimes you have to big time. And speaking of risk, uh, this is a, I would call this a risk. What they're doing, and we'll we'll close out this segment. Nintendo is re-releasing, or remastered, I should say. In my opinion, one of the best Legend of Zelda games ever to hit market. In my opinion, it's actually one of my top three. Uh, it would be my number three uh, Zelda game. And I'm looking for because I want to show. Um, you know, I've never Frank. played Zelda. None of them? I, I mean, again, I know Nintendo, you don't have Nintendo. But I plan on it. That's one of my uh, bucket lists. As sad <laughs> as that is, is to. Dark Alliance. Oh, God. Wait, <laughs> on GameCube. Uh, oh, I can't find the thing. Oh, well. Uh, oh, I know where I have it. So. Well, good thing on the NES Classic has The Legend of Zelda. Yes, well, that's where I plan on starting. Is that the, That's the original. Yes, OG Zelda. Yes. I, see, you know me. I have to, if I like, if I find an author I like, I have to read his first book. Yeah, even if, yeah. even if, I, if I read the fifth book and I just picked it, I'm like, oh, now I have to go back and read the series in, author, in order, <laughs> or the, the, the author in order, because I have OCD. So, so what they're doing is, and it was funny, too, because when I'm watching Nintendo Direct, which was live, if you will, um, I remember I was messaging Anthony, and because um, he's in LA, and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm in the middle of watching Nintendo Direct. Some of these games because they're coming out like Death, uh, uh, Dead by Daylight is coming out on the Switch. He plays that great. often. He loves it. He already has it on the Xbox and the PlayStation. Right. Now he's gonna get it on the Switch. He told me to buy it, but I looked at it on YouTube, and it's a little scary. It, 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 is, it is frightening. <laughs> I played it. I played it a few times when I was over there in LA. So he goes, "Oh yeah, and uh, also uh, Link's Awakening." I'm like, "What?" I'm like, I'm still watching. The Nintendo Direct. He's like, oh, uh, just wait and see. So he kind of spoiled <laughs> it for me. So what Nintendo's doing is Nintendo is remastering and bringing to the Switch from the Nintendo Game Boy uh, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. 
again, one of the best Zelda games ever to be made. My top number three. Um, the only thing I'm concerned about is the graphics. Now, I'm going to show Frank, and, and everyone who's listening, I know you, you watch, you saw the graphics, and you'll see this on our Instagram and on our Facebook. I'm going to show Frank a few um, screenshots here from the Game Boy game. So that's the original Game Boy. Okay. Very straightforward, yeah. very Game Boy. Very Game Boy-ish. But, and again, the gameplay was amazing. So here's the new graphics, which I don't know what to make of them. Hmm. Someone today at work told this me... This is for what system? The, the Switch. I don't hate them. It looks too cute. That's what bugs me. <laughs> no, uh, the top one, I could see. The house looks like a Smurf house. Yeah, it does. Actually, it does, yeah. And Sorry, those are... I apologize for sniffling. I'm, I'm, no, I'm right. working with a cold here. Um, and, but as I'll show you, like, it's those same scenes, respectively. Right, right. Yeah, so... Well, I mean, obviously the graphics are a huge upgrade. Of course. But I, I don't hate them, per se. I don't know. It's a little weird. Like, again... I think one... It's also hard to look at something as just a screen if you... If you um, when you actually have the gameplay, true, that might be something different. So, true. So, uh, but we'll see. And um, you know, I just wanted to hit on some of those. Uh, do you like to see old games out on new systems, like re-releases? Um, like you, mean, LA Noir? you mean like re- like reboots? I guess or, you could say, or like 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 what you just showed me, or like just the original game on a newer system. <laughs> so, um, actually. <laughs> it's actually quite all right. So, uh, let me take a moment here. Bye. <laughs> See, this is what happens this when you a, when you have a, a married guy <laughs> doing the retro gamers. <laughs> my uh, my lovely daughter just brought me my Fine. very late dinner, and this so. is a um, this is a uh, almost like a cliffhanger. This is a carryover. You know, like those old episodes, like oh, TGI, yes. Fridays. Yes, uh, TGI Fridays. Yes, TGI Fridays. TGIF, where like the hurricane was blowing through all four television shows. That were in that block, right? Probably ice cold. <laughs> and what what my daughter wanted to whispered yeah. in my ear was that we didn't know if Larry was hungry, so we got him French fries. <laughs> Aww, so kind. So I am. Not full. only did you get an orange iced tea in the last uh, uh, podcast. Oh, with the tie. Well, of course it's hot. Right, cool. My family's sorry for this. This is <laughs> Rippo's going to be like, "What's going on?" <laughs> See, Rippo, you could have been here and had food, but <laughs> no, <laughs> could have flew in from from L.A. Um, so, yes, what? L.A. You saying L.A. Noir? Uh, perfect example. I, I now I didn't play the original, but I got the remastered one, mm-hmm. and it's a pretty it's a pretty good game. I really don't have any uh, opinion on it. Um, kind of like Resident Evil Two that's coming out, right? Now, now the, that Resident Evil two that that's out is that a re, that's a reboot of which Resident Evil? Resident Evil two on so the it's PlayStation. Just the Re- Resident Evil two on PlayStation with what upgrade upgraded oh, it's graphics? Like, it's like built from the ground up again, but it's basically the same game. But Are there the new graphic- levels? Are there new? I mean, is I it the exact same game? I, I know what you're talking about. There if it's the exact same game, then there I, may, I don't get it. There may be some mechanics that are different. I got to imagine the overall story is going to be the same. Don't worry about it. Just no, it's it. good. I'm just going to talk over me opening up a wrapper of my dinner. Sorry, people. <laughs> Ooh, that looks good. It does look good. Is that that chicken? Yes. It's the chicken the, ranchero. The, the, the ranchero. The ro- <laughs> ranchero. Nachos huevos. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we're going to take a quick break. We're no, gonna... we're good. No, we're good. Don't worry. Okay. So we keep it real here, people. No, we do. This but is the better half of the retro gamers. It is. But unlike the better half, we do uh, have little segments that we do get to. <laughs> So. Oh, good. So tell me when you want me to. <laughs> we're probably going to move on. But check out the Nintendo Direct. Um, let us know on the Facebook page, you know, what games from the Nintendo Direct are you looking forward to? Box Boy and Box Girl. Um, a Bayonetta 3, that was the one that Nintendo said, we need more time. Hang tight. We're going to get there. It's always better when you got me the wrong sandwich. All right. So it's time for a retro birthday. Happy, happy birthday, happy birthday. Sorry, I didn't mean to overstep you. I was, I just get It's all right. We like to sing here at the Retro Gamers. Happy birthdays. Happy birthday. And we can sing it now and not get sued anymore because now it's public domain. What if I sing the, uh, you say it's your birthday. All right, let's stop right there. (laughs) So, (laughs) happy 29th birthday to Super Mario Brothers 3. How old are you now? 29, I just said. Wow. Yes. I, and that's 29 here in North America. You just said it. 
came out in 1980. Came out in 1988 in Japan, but uh, when, when I'm running the show, it's all about the U.S. So, Super Mario Brothers 3, in my opinion, probably the best Super Mario Brothers game that has ever come out. Um, it really set the standard for every side-scrolling Super Mario Brothers moving forward uh, with the overworld map, the levels inside those overworld maps, and of course, every overworld looking at, like, you know, different level types and everything. Um, we got introduced to the Koopa Kids for the first time, uh, which were the enemies, and at the time were supposed to be the sibling, uh, excuse me, the um, the offspring of Bowser. Later on, they just became, like, henchmen, hench people. Uh, and of course... Hen- hen- hench persons? Hen- hench pers- personnel. Gotcha. Um, and of course, I think we all can remember where we all were when we first heard and laid our eyes on Super Mario Bros. 3, and it was that wonderful blockbuster starring America's favorite kid, Fred Savage. Oscar award-winning movie, I believe. Uh, maybe not that far. No, the, there was a guy named Oscar in the movie. Oh, I'm yes, sorry. Yeah, he okay. He won an award. He won an, yeah, in high school. that's right. <laughs> that's full of hoop. The Wizard, which, in my opinion was a fantastic movie. I love that movie. 1989, Fred Savage and whatever the girl I found where she I don't even know where she ended up. Um that's a that was a heck of a road trip movie for kids. That was a strange movie. Very strange little um Jenny Lewis, I believe yes, her name was. Yes, Jenny Lewis. Yeah, Good call. Christian, don't forget Christian Slater. Oh, Christian Slater and the fo- uh, uh which uh um, Bridges. Bo Bridges. <laughs> Holy cow. Him fun fact. Okay. Uh, and your listeners will love this, Mm -hmm. a certain Spider-Man made his film debut in that movie. Ooh. Tobey Maguire? Tobey Maguire. That was his feature film debut? That's what I'm reading. Wait, Tobey Maguire. Oh, he was one of, um, one of What's-His-Face's buddies, running buddies, I think. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, The Power Glove. I love The Power Glove. Oh, um... What was his name? I'm trying to remember. I can't remember his name. <laughs> I just said it. Editing. <laughs> Lucas Barton. Lucas. Ah, uh, Lucas. Him in a stupid power glove. The, pa- the power glove. Cheater, cheater. I, love- I could not get the power glove to work for the life of me. Never had one. You had to hook it up. There was three cents. All right. I know there's a flat screen. But let's go back. Oh, that's a nice uh, cut there. Um, let's go back to when we all had box televisions. Oh, yes. It would sit <laughs> It would sit on top of the box, on top of the TV, and then hang down the side. So there was three sensors in the corners. And then you had this power glove. And, of course, I was a fat child. So even the large was a little tight for me. <laughs> so the tips of my fingers would kind of turn blue. Um, and, of course, in I haven't seen a fight in hockey in forever. Um, I thought they you took them out. tell them that we have yeah, hockey on <laughs> We're watching, watching the Ranger game. Um so, what was I talking about? See, this power is about because I do edit this show. Power I glove. edit heavily. Uh, the power glove in that game, Lucas made it look so easy to play Rad Racer with that stupid power glove. Uh, no, I couldn't it's get the I, magic of editing. I, I couldn't get Punch Out to work. I couldn't get Rad Racer to work. I just ended up cutting the cutting the wire and just using it to play as a superhero. That's what I did. Um, <laughs> And, of course, in The Wizard, uh, Jimmy, cross, cross country, basically, uh, gets to the Nintendo Power Fest, which I actually went to in 1990. Yes, I remember you, I at, remember you telling the story. Actually, Anna. me and Anthony were there before we knew each other, way before we knew each other. Right, right. It was at the Jacob Jab Center here in New York. And, uh, and then that's when uh, me, it was me, my parents, and my uncle, and then we went to the restaurant, that, uh, the bar from Spin City that oh, they always God. used to go to. Yes. You know uh, of it, what yeah, I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a real bar about, in the city. I don't remember the name. And then I remember... Um, uh, uh, Rudy Giuliani walked into the bar. I remember my dad going, that guy's going to be mayor someday. Not like that. Should have been president. <laughs> hey, now. No politics. <laughs> right. Sorry. Um, but, yeah, so, and, and of course, they get to the finals of the tournament, and they, you know, going to play a game that they've never seen before. Super Mario Brothers 3. Yeah. <laughs> So now no one knows what to do. This is a brand new game. They were studying the finals to, to you know, for Jimmy to win the top prize. So World 1-1, one, one, go. And out of nowhere, someone goes, get the warp whistle. How do you know there's a warp whistle? Yeah, right. No one's ever seen it. The How did very you know? first time. 
is also the same girl who to uh, to get the uh, detective who's trying to get Jimmy back to his parents. Uh, the bounty hunter. Yeah, the bounty hunter. The bounty hunter screams yeah. in the middle of the uh, casino. He touched my breasts. <laughs> and she's like 12. <laughs> nice. And then I mean, when, not nice. And no, then, bad. So when he goes, what are you talking about? She doesn't even have breasts. That's what he said? Yep. Oh, God. And that was in a PG movie in 1989. That was a kid's movie. <laughs> you couldn't make that. You could. I don't think you could do that today. No, no, no. no Animal House. Don't even get me started. Um, so Super Mario Brothers 3, 29 <clears throat> years old. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. To one of the best out there. All right, so we are back. I think you wanted to mention something about the wizard. I cut you off there before. Yeah, um, if you read the description of wizard uh, on Wikipedia, this was a kids' movie. Basically, yeah. It sounds like something that like Buffalo Bill from The Silence of the Lambs should be in. It sounds creepy. I mean, if you just Jimmy Woods is a young boy suffering from PTSD after his twin sister Jennifer drowned two years earlier. Right there alone. Is I'm thinking like I see Macaulay Culkin, you know, throwing a kid off a bridge or something, you know. <laughs> My girl? Oh no, he died in that. Uh, no, the, the good son. Oh yes, you yes, know. Yes. Um, then there's talk to, talk of a, a mental institute and a bounty hunter and uh, the kids running away with the older brother to go across country to enter. Obviously, well, the, the kids part to enter a uh, video Armageddon tournament. Yes, video <laughs> you know? Armageddon. And then they meet um, Jimmy uh, Lucas, uh, who's uh, got the power glove. You know, yeah, stupid Lucas. Um, and it's just like it's it's crazy. Jimmy, Jimmy, and Jimmy, here Jimmy, Jimmy. They're trying to they're trying to prove that if the kid kid could play a video game, that he shouldn't be in a mental institute. I mean, what? <laughs> well, you know, he had a high score in Double Dragon when they were trying to get on the bus. So I don't know. It just <laughs> it, uh, it just it's disturbing. You know, uh, you should watch it with the guys I mean, from Mission Science. Fourteen point three million. Just just so yeah, you know. listen, that's that's good. six billion dollar budget. That's a win. Well, yeah. Um, you should listen to it with the Mission Science Theater. Guys, making fun of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, very definitely, funny. I definitely will have very to funny. do that. You know what's not so funny? Spending a lot of money on video games, which I've done, but yes. never this amount. So just recently, a near-perfect... Let me see if I can zoom in on this. There we go. A near-perfect boxed Super Mario Brothers game graded 9.4 out of 10. Um, it's got a... The seal is rated an A++. So I guess it means like no little holes in the shrink wrap or whatever. Super Mario Brothers. In box. Sold. For $100,150. At a recent auction. I'm looking at the picture of this right here. And it's it's in a clear case. Now that's the box. The black box in the clear case. That's the box that it, it was sold in. Yeah, that's how it was sold. So that box is in mint condition. Apparently, yeah. What year did Super Mario Brothers come out? 85 over here. How is it possible that this thing has stayed so pristine over Someone probably just 39 had years? Just kept it. Who knows? Um, it sold at auction recently. Actually, WADA auction, which uh, me and Anthony talked about a couple weeks ago. This is the single highest price ever paid for a single game. Wow. Over $100,000. So when I saw this article, when Anthony saw this article, you know, I thought to myself, that is sick. That is ridiculous. Because before that, a copy of Super Mario Brothers sold for like 30000 This is obviously in one, 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 one in existence that is in yeah. good of shape. But, well, here's the thing, because I've seen sealed Super Mario Brothers games. I've seen them. Not go, all right, maybe a couple hundred. I can understand that. I get that. But 100000 So... Here's the reason, though, because I'm looking, I'm like, how could this sell for so much? Well, Larry, here's how it can sell for so much. And I honestly didn't even know this um, was the case. But apparently, Super Mario Brothers, which I didn't know this, was there were like 11 different box variations between 1985 and 1994. So just the way the box looked. Now, it could have been something very small. It could have been a major overhaul. Right. But 11 different boxes. What happens is, now this is the original black box. When the Nintendo first came out here in the U.S., there was about 17 games called the Black Box Series. That, pro wrestling, baseball, soccer, stuff This like was that. the first run of games? It was like the first games to come out on the, sis- on the system, right. and they all had that same black box look to it. Right. Then so, they switched over to Well, then they started gray? varying. Well, no, gray was Konami. 
Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm yeah, sorry. Konami had its own look as well. And then just games. Well, the cassettes were, were gray. That's what I'm thinking. Well, all, all the carts were gray. Right. Yeah. Car- well, no, actually, cards. they were called cassettes, to be honest with you. They were called, that was the oh, actual okay. name for them. Um, very good. Thank you. Um, of course, you, then you had like your Legend of Zelda, which was gold. Correct. Or yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Um, so the reason why this got over 100,000 is because, according to Wada Games, as production, and I'm quoting here from uh, Engadget.com, as production began ramping up in 1986, Nintendo ditched the sticker seals and began shrink wrapping its games. Now, this one in particular, a f- again, I quote, a foil sticker on the top of the black box that indicates it's among the very first run of 17 NES games, like you said, Frank, uh, produced in America. Uh, these were released in test markets across New York and Los Angeles between October 1985 and March of 86, back when the NES came bundled with Duck Hunt and Gyromite, which is when I got the Nintendo. So right, that's when most of my friends yeah. got it also when it was bundled. Uh, other titles in this is, is Steam lineup, Hogan's Alley, Wild Gunman. You have to use your hands. That's a baby's toy. And baseball. No, nothing? No. Nothing? Sorry. Back to the Future Part 2. Oh, yeah, Elijah Wood. Elijah, yeah, yeah. they're playing Wild Gunman. Yeah, I thought you were quoting the game. I'm oh, sorry. No. <laughs> that was called a wonderful movie. It's the best movie ever made. So, now it makes Fighting sense. For it. I-, I liked two better than one. Oh, no, the whole tr- the trilogy. Oh, the trilogy is fantastic. Trilogy yeah, made. absolutely. Um, so, this is a first run. I mean, a f- think about it. Whether it's baseball cards, whether it's comic books. So, now you're looking at one of the literally very first... Box games. I'm just amazed games, that me. it stayed this pristine over this amount of time. But uh, I mean, are you truly with the way, th- like, way people keep comic books and keep baseball cards? Yeah, but back then in the '80s, I I don't think that was a thought of like. Well, I agree like, on that. Like in the '70s, no one said, "Oh, I better save all my Star Wars figures because they're going to be worth money someday." You know, mm-hmm. I, I think the um, collectors' uh, um, market, so to speak, the picked up of the world. Picked up. Um, in the late '80s, um, where people started realizing, realizing this stuff is going to be might be worth money someday, and that's when some poor poor idiot like myself decided, well, I'm going to start collecting comics now, <laughs> and they're worth nothing. They missed the bubble, be- yes, yeah. because the comics that I have that are sealed in boxes in that back room there are worth nothing because they were mass produced, they're worth bupkis. Right. So you know, I don't think back in the in your mid '80s when this game came out. That it might have been someone's thought to go, this is going to be worth money someday. I might be able to make six figures yeah. off it. <clears throat> you know, like, I, my, for me, I collect, I played Matchbox cars and Hot Wheels like there was no tomorrow. And I have hundreds of them. And I gave them to my son. You know? It, That's why I saved them. But I realize I have some that are worth, I have like one or two that are worth like 50, 60 bucks. Good, yeah. What That's am I going to do with pops. it? What am I going to do with it, though? I mean, I'm not going to retire on it. Oh, of course. You know, but like, you know, so those... I didn't give to my son, <laughs> but <laughs> but you know what? This one could be just like there was a story recently when all the Toys R Uses were going under here in North America, well, here in the U.S. Toys R Uses, Toys R Uses, Toys R Uses, um, when they were breaking down the um, stores, someone found still sealed. I think it was a Super Mario sixty four. I remember still reading sealed. something about this. So this game could have just been left somewhere. You know, True. it may have been True. dusty, but you can clean the dust off. Right. So that, you know, could have been on a top shelf exactly. somewhere. Just, yeah, exactly. Now, again, that's as they say, probably the most expensive single game ever released. There are some games as well, some kind of oddball games, if you will. I didn't even know some of these existed. I'm just gonna go through a couple, a few of them here. Um, first one is a international version of Yoshi's Story. Uh, which was basically Yoshi's Island on the N64. International version meaning what? That it was made in Japan well, or something? That's or? the thing. Basically, it's a Japanese language game that only worked on U.S. systems. Interesting. Very interesting. It was not for resale. Um, I've never heard of this before. Uh, what it was, it was an in-store demo, basically. Okay. But the only version they had, I guess, was the English wasn't done yet. The translation well, wasn't done yet. and most of those in-store demos, I don't believe they ha- you could really hit it. There was no sound. Some of them may have, may have had sound. Some okay. of them. But, or it may have had For the text. most part, though. I don't, it may have right, text. Right, right, right. So, and it says international version on it, and the cover is a little different. Um, it can go for over $1,100, Wow, this cart. Wow. It's nuts. Um, a very famous Cheetah Man. 
uh, almost basically one of the first home brews that just sucked. Just the game didn't work. It was wonky. You find uh, those; those go for about thirteen hundred dollars. Wow. Uh, what else do we have here? And I know we've mentioned some of these I before. I collected the wrong things. This I've never seen this before until now, and I want one. Ducktales on NES, one of the best games ever, and one yeah, of the I most. Yeah, I remember you guys talked about that game a sort lot. Off, uh, sort out games, sort out games, sort after, sort, sort after games. Where if you can find it in box, it's going to go for a few hundred dollars easily, and that's a good price. But apparently, they made a gold cartridge, Ducktales, and what happened was, oh, is that what this is? I couldn't got my hands on. No, I couldn't have. In 2013, Capcom released DuckTales Remastered. It was on the newer consoles. It was actually a very fun game. To promote it, they sent journalists gold NES cartridge DuckTales. Only 150 of them were created. And those games go for at least $1,300. Gotcha. So, uh, virtual bowling. Oh, I'm so happy Anthony's not here to talk about this. (laughs) Virtual bowling. Does he which like was, that game? Uh, no, because it was on the Virtual Boy. Ah. Oh. Which, sadly, I don't know what's happening Hashtag this week. Hashtag leave Larry alone. I don't know what's happening to it this week. Uh, Anthony's, he won the contest, and the last, he hasn't he hasn't destroyed it yet. He still has it, and every week he teases me with it. I think he's secretly yes. fixing it and making it work better. Ooh, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. I think he's secretly, like you know, that. he's your bestie and he loves um, you. No, he's. I know it's just a matter of time because he's sadistic. He has a cold, cold heart. <laughs> um, but, Ant, maybe you should not destroy the Virtual Boy because if you can get your hands on Virtual Bowling, that can go for an easy $1,800. Uh, Larry, no one's getting their hands on Virtual <laughs> Bowling. <laughs> what else we got here? Um, ooh, what is this game? Hagony, The Final Conflict on... Do you remember Blockbusters? I still have my Blockbuster card. Do you really? Yeah, it's somewhere. It's probably in this <laughs> desk drawer somewhere. So Blockbuster actually had exclusive rental games. Do you remember these? I didn't know that. Or just no. have a kid. Like, they were special edition versions you could only rent from Blockbuster. Uh, I remember like Clay Fighters was one of them. I think I still might have GoldenEye from Blockbuster here somewhere. Oh, boy. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I told a story on another podcast where I returned my parents' wedding video to Captain Video. Yes. Yep. Yes. So this game, uh, Hagney, H-A-G-A-N-E, The Final Conflict, was a Blockbuster exclusive rental. Um, if you can get your hands on it, you're going to be able to make a cool $3,600. Nice. Good Lord. And wow. there's going to be a ton more. I'm not really going to go through all of them, but this last one I'll mention real quick. Um, wow, this is gorgeous. I'll show this to you in a minute. Legend of Zelda, Oracle of Ages and Seasons Limited Edition. Basically, 500 of these bundles. It was an actual bundle. That came with the games, pins, T-shirts, and a boomerang. A boomerang. That's cool. Because ages and um, a, Like seasons, a life-size boomerang? Yeah, like a real boomerang. Nothing like giving a child a weapon. <laughs> um, these games were on the Game Boy Color, and they linked to each other. So when you beat one game, you got a code to put into the other oh, game, okay. and you start with all your weapons, and then gotcha, you, you gotcha. play on with that. This thing goes for almost $4,000. I mean, this, I love it. Look at that. That's really cool looking. Wow, that is and really again, nice. We'll, we'll put and that all comes up. together in, yeah. in, in in that little like. Uh, I've never carrying seen case. that before. Yeah. Oh, carrying case, display case. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that too. <gasps> if anyone still has their Super Nintendo mouse and mouse pad, a hundred dollars right there. Very easy. Oh, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm falling into the rabbit hole here. Oh, abort, course. Larry. Abort. Abort. This I'll final mention. Abort your eyes. And everyone knows about this. And Frank, you may have heard about this. The Nintendo World Championship cartridges. Yes. Um, from actually. Uh, the Nintendo Power Fest. Right. I've been to, Anthony been to. I was too scared to play in the <laughs> tournament, even though I had yes, a ticket I for it. Yes, I remember this. And uh, Anthony somehow, I think, played twice. I think that was a story that he told. Um, the winners or or some of the runner-up uh, contestants got copies of these games. Um, there's a gold cart and a gray cart, and the gold carts go for about 26000 Whoa, I thought you were going to say 2600 Wow, 26000 yep. That's insanity. The gray cartridges go for about 19000 That is ridiculous. It's just amazing, you know, how, I mean, is it, it's just, the, you know, the games are, are, it's not even the fact that the games are, you know, the best games ever or whatever, but it's the, the rarity of these games. Game Boy Pocket Sonar. 
What is this? It was used for actual fishing. Really? <laughs> in Japan, you hook it up to your Game Boy, you drop it in the water, it goes deep as 65 feet, and you can find it for $500 <laughs> on eBay. That's insanity. Holy cow. All right. Well, there's a ton more of these. I never understood fishing games. <laughs> I, no, I, this I, is for real fishing. No, I know, but oh. I never understood fishing games. But it's like fishing is boring <laughs> in real life. I can't. I, I can't fishing. imagine a fishing game. But you got to have like the fishing when you have the, yeah, the, I, I, the rod. I can't. Oh, well. I just. I can't. Um. So, check it out. We're gonna post a lot of these on the uh, on the Facebook page, on the Instagram page, and uh, let us know what you think. Maybe too much is for a video game, and um, twenty six thousand dollars. And like, what is? And for those of you out there, maybe Frank, you have one too. Like, is there a holy grail of a video game that you've been sorting out for for the longest time? There is a video game that, and a, a life-size video game. As you know, I have you know my Arkanoid game here, and believe yeah, it or not, no, awesome. I went to someone's house two weeks ago, and they had an Arkanoid game. Really? I was like, oh my god! I was Son like, uh, yeah, it was a, a fraternity thing. Oh, okay. But um, um, <clears throat> there is a game that I saw when I was a little kid, and uh, I don't know if it's on any consoles. I'm sure I could YouTube video it, but um, a YouTube video is it? I could just <laughs> YouTube it. Um. It's called Jack and the Beanstalk. Oh, okay. It was an actual... It was similar to, like, Crazy Climber. Yes. Okay, actually, I have to change it. If I could get my hands on a Crazy Climber, (laughs) that would be very exciting. Now, Crazy Climber... Crazy Climber is... I Actually, if you look it up right now, I bet you Crazy Climber is expensive. Because I think my brother, who's very big into video games, tried to get his hands on a Crazy Climber, and he still can't. Which, like, an arcade? An arcade. An actual arcade. Because the one I remember, I think they had it for Atari. Oh, they, it came out. It was yeah, Atari, horrible. Yeah. It was terrible. It just didn't know justice. Um, but yeah, Crazy Climber. Oh my! Oh, crazy, crazy Climber was very similar to Jack and the Beanstalk. I should say vice versa. Um, it was it was um, similar to that. You had to climb the beanstalk, but there were certain branches you could mm-hmm. climb, and then there was also a second part where you got to the top of the stalk, and you had to deal with like it was like you were in the clouds, so you had to know which clouds to step on. Um, if I remember correctly, I saw it in Lake George when I was a little kid, and I never saw it since. <laughs> and but I remember playing it in the hotel arcade. I can't find what, the arcade version. Okay, but um, yeah, it was it was uh, it was fantastic. But yeah, Crazy Climber that would be my holy grail. All right, I'd have to say that. Yeah, well, so. let us let us know what your holy grail is, and check us out on the Facebook page, and let us know what your holy grail is. All right, boy. It's I think it's usually more fun when Anthony uh, preps all this. So we have um, in in honor of Super Mario Brothers three. Yes, and it's it's uh, birthday. Uh, Frank, did you know? I did not know that. Did, oh, the uh, the names of the Kooplings in Super Mario Brothers three. No, were also in later variations um, of Super Mario Brothers games. Kodo and Podo. No, not at all. They were Larry, Iggy, Roy, Lemmy, Ludwig, Vaughn. Bowser, uh, Morton Jr., Wendy O. Did not know any of those. Now, can you guess who they may be named after? And some of them are a little shocking can you for a video them game. really quick? I'm going to do Here you go. Uh, Larry. You. <laughs> I wish. But I was very happy when I saw Larry because when I was little, the only Larry I knew on television was Larry from, from Perfect Strangers. Well, three so, company was past your time. It was before oh, your time, I guess. No, I mean, I used to watch reruns. Wasn't Larry yeah. done. <laughs> but um, so Larry Cooper, I was like, oh, that's cool. Okay. Um, named after Larry Mullen Jr. Uh, from U2. Really? Yep. Okay, so wait, stop. Ludwig? Okay. They're all, they're, they're all named after musicians. Mm, mostly. Uh, Ludwig von Cooper, named after Lud- Ludwig. Why can I say Ludwig? Ludwig. I can't. Ludwig. Okay, Ludwig von Beethoven, Lemmy, Lemmy from Motorhead, Lemmy Kilmeister, which I think is his real last name, Roy, Rogers, Roy Orbison. Orbison. Do you remember Roy Rogers? Uh, the restaurant. The restaurant. <laughs> oh yeah, in Kings Plaza Mall. Absolutely. <laughs> There's one in Jersey. That's like all that's left. And, oh yeah, and you know, very famous for loading up your own toppings. Oh yeah, that's oh, my what God. you the, the amount of pickles I would put oh, on my. Oh my brick. God, there would be mountains. I would have a jar. Uh, we need more pickles, <laughs> sir. Sir, le- little boy, little boy, leave. A little fat Chubby boy little boy. There's a little that little fat kid's back. Uh, Hal, Hal, <laughs> get in the front of the fat kid's back. He's eating all the pickles. Iggy, Iggy Pop, Iggy Pop, very good. What year was this? 
1990. Okay, so this makes sense. Um, Morton Cooper Jr. Morton Downey Jr. Zip it. Very good. Morton Downey Jr. <laughs> Which well, because, because they said Morton but Cooper I'm saying, Jr. Morton Downey Jr.? That was the cigarettes. Don't flip it. Don't whip it, but zip it. Get out of here. That was that was Shock TV before Shock I think TV. My brother was on an episode of Morning. Was Downey. he really? Like in, not, he was in the audience. Oh. You know. Remember Richard Bay? Yeah, <laughs> loved all those shows for a different episode. Um, different and, and finally, Wendy O. Cooper. Which this one I'm very sure. Uh, Wendy Williams? No, no, Wendy. Very close. Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. Uh, I'm thinking like there's a VJ named Wendy. Wendy O. Williams, not the Wendy, Wendy Williams from today. Right, Randy O. Williams. That's what I'm thinking of. From, do you know what group she was in? Uh, the Plasmatics. Yes. Funny thing. There's a guy named Stu who was in the Plasmatics. Okay. Pla- how do I pronounce it? I'm assuming Plasma. P-L-A-S-M-A-T-I-C. He's a, he's a safety guy now at the Postal Service. Is he really? <laughs> I've met him. <laughs> I've worked with him. Well, Wendy uh, O. Williams was arrested numerous times for... Um, uh, indecent exposure is what we'll leave it at, and doing things to herself on stage. And we're going to leave it at that, folks, uh, for this PG show. Um, I think she ended up killing herself. I'm not sure. Hold on. I'm going to look it up right now. Oh, yeah, as if we have a machine that could do this. It's yeah. weird It's weird doing this episode not Wendy on Skype. Wendy Williams. Stu Deutsch. What? <laughs> Stu Deutsch. <laughs> That's is- who he's looking up. <laughs> Stu Deutsch. He, well, no, no, he is a safety guy. He's like the head of safety in Long Island District of, of the. I just blew up his act. Frank's a postman. If no one uh, knew about that, yes, I work at the post office. So those are the kids. And another real quick fun fact: I don't have the names in front of me, but for the Super Mario Brothers three cartoon, the Kooplings were in the game, but their names were completely different because they really weren't named yet when the cartoons were made. So that's an interesting one. And uh, that is this week's. Did you know? Do you know where we're going to? All right, so we're going to bring this podcast getting ready to a close. But, uh, Frank, you know, you're here. This is like a special episode. So I want to do something. A very special episode? Not a very special episode. Right. Oh, that's not the like, half. That's better half during Christmas time. Tune but, in every other Wednesday. Yes. Uh, but this is a, a special episode. So I want to talk about something a little special, a little off topic. But um, I feel like this is still related to gamers. And I'm talking about pop vinyls. Yes, I have some of those. Funko pop vinyl. You have a good amount. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, um, I got my first one with a loot crate box, which I which is mistakenly opened. That's okay. You, you, um, you were a Brown. newbie. Um, but I do have them on the hovercraft, which is kind of cool. Yes, that is very cool, actually. Okay, yeah. I like I, – I don't have a particular um, – genre that i i follow i like the odd ones you know i have okay. a bob ross i have yeah. a michael corleone <laughs> well you do have uh, a few walking dead that's yeah well i'm a big to. walking dead i like that negan i got um i got the sandlot yeah i got pennywise the clown i do have a han solo and the uh the one from monsters inc <laughs> who talks like this boys <laughs> none of this ever happened boys so so i want to talk about and i'm a huge pop uh, vinyl oh, collector. Oh, Predator. I also have Predator. Do you have Predator? Oh, yeah. Um, so, I love my pop vinyls. I have over 230 of them. Tried to sell them, but I just don't want to get rid of any of them. But today, when we record, Funko announced the 2019 New York Toy Fair. Um, of course, they're not available yet. But well, you originally, you just won a Funko. I did. A uh, Mariah Carey, All I Want for Christmas <laughs> is You Funko <laughs> That's Pop. That's fantastic. Oh, I love it. I love it. Um. These are the lineups of the new Funkos that are going to be coming out. Frank, hit the button so you can see it. Tell me when it loads. It's loading. On your computer. All right, I see. So, NASCAR. This is wild. This is some wild stuff. Some Boston Red Sox. So, hold on, hold on, hold on. So oh, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, NASCAR, which is very cool. I've never seen NASCAR before, so I think that's a new one. It's um, funny because I, I guess because I don't follow NASCAR that I don't... Um, I don't. I wouldn't recognize anyone. Oh yeah, I can't. I mean, the only one I can tell is um, the one in the hat. Uh, which can is, I ask uh, you an aside about Petty. Funko uh, real quick? Yeah, yeah. Did they really make one about that viral video with that? Um, oh no, that was fake. Yeah, it was fantastic. You can create your own. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Okay, Dustin's. wonderful. All right. Uh, so, yeah, Ooh. NASCAR. Hold on. Yeah. Jim, ooh, I'm sorry. NASCAR. Jim, no, I know. You're jumping ahead. I'm sorry. I'm no, not, no, no, no. It's I'll, okay. Um, they have uh, uh, the Griffin brothers from the NFL. Which, wait a minute. Yes, that is the one brother who is missing a hand. That's who that is. And he's... He's a Funko now. He's missing a hand. Yeah. And he's in the NFL. It's creepy. Uh, yes, the Boston Red Sox. Oh, actually, you know what? Hold on. Boston Red Sox. Pops are coming out. I like the one with the picture on the mound. Yes. But if you swipe, because that one has multiple pictures on that one, that's why you don't want to okay. jump ahead too much. Oh, oh okay. Uh, looks like we have, is that uh, Syndergaard? The picture for the uh, Mets? Oh, a lot of oh, pictures. Okay. A lot of batters. I don't know who these people are. I play video games. I don't know who these people are. Um, what is it? Tupac? Oh, that's cool. Tupac. So a lot of baseball players. Um so we got to cool that. There's the, um, it looks like the mascots. Yes, that and that one has multiple pictures on that one. The Mr. Met looks a little weird. Yeah, he does look, he looks like he's high as a kite. <laughs> Muhammad Ali. Yes, they have Muhammad Sorry, Ali. Sorry, I went ahead. No, no, it's all right. Oh, and um, if you swipe past that, not only Muhammad Ali, is that Babe Ruth? Yes, that is a Babe Ruth pop. I'm not getting the multiple. Uh... Let me see your screen. No. There should be little arrows, maybe. I see. It's going right. To, it's going right to the next Funko Pop. It's a little slide. Whatever. I don't care. Let me see. I want to see. No, I know how to use Instagram. I'm not a moron. Well, well. Oh, there it is. You know what? Because it's a white background. That's oh yeah. No, it is a little tough. That is Babe Ruth. Yes, and he's pointing his shot. Yep, that's pretty cool. So, that is a cool one. Um, and he looks like old timey too. Like his skin color is off. He does. He looks like he's dead. Um, the Jim Henson pops. I need these Jim Henson. Pops. I love these Jim Henson. One pops. has him with Kermit the Frog. <laughs> And the Target exclusive is him with Ernie. Hi, ho. <laughs> uh, the Green Giant. Oh, oh, oh. That's a cute one. I like the next one. The Green Giant. And if you keep scrolling past Green Giant, you get Kool-Aid Man. Oh, yeah. That is awesome. This is, see, this is hard for me to see because it's a white background. No, I know, I know. I'll tell you when they're Kool-Aid. Uh, Otter Pops. Oh, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Oh, yeah. I don't know who Otter Pops are, so. Otter Pops are the, what do you call it? Those frozen ices. That's the these things? Yes, they're the, they're the Pops on the oh. outside. They're just... Oh. They would line up the clear screen with their faces with the different yes. colored pops. Oh, man. Oh, man. Then there's, uh, are those Pez? Yeah, they put out Pez dispens- okay. dispensers as well. I'm going to skip over those. Um, but I think some of those may have. Ooh. It's a Bob's Big Boy Pez dispenser. That's awesome. Uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet. Who the hell is Post Malone? Is that rapper Ugh. with all the tattoos on his face? I as hate you can him say? and I hate his Funko Pop. Pet Cemetery Pop. <gasps> Cage Creed. What do you see Sometimes dead is better. That's that's his name in the movie. Oh, oh, oh from Pet Cemetery. Yeah, with oh. the with the dead cat Churchill. <laughs> uh, Hellboy looks pretty sweet. Hellboy looks good. I like uh, the Joker and uh, Harley Quinn. Oh yeah, those are. Um, ooh, I forget what they call those. Now, if you go to the Ghostbusters ones, the Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters if you swipe, here's uh, a um, marshmallow Peter Venkman and the headquarters. Yes, I see that. Right. Uh, no, I like the burnt, the burnt marshmallow man, and oh, yeah. they have a burnt marshmallow man on fire. Oh, look at! Wait, if you keep going, my son has the giant uh, Funko. Yeah, that no, that's Frankie those, bought him for like it. the ten-inch size yeah, ones. Yeah. Ten, yeah, yep. Did you see the one of uh, Peter and um, hey, man. Egon capturing Slimer? No, I didn't see that one. I've been looking at the that's house right cool. now. If you go past that one, I like the one with the Slimer eating the hot dogs. Yeah, that's cute. Oh yeah! Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a good. Those are good ones. Oh man, they're putting out some. There good is no Dana, ones. only Zool. No, there's Zool. <laughs> is that Zool? I thought that was. Oh, that is Zool. Or is that the old lady in no, the library? No, I think uh, it's library. the old lady in the library. Okay. Uh, what else? Shh. Go get her, Ray. <laughs> get her. Um, Super oh. Troopers. Uh, we have the Men in Black. I'm trying not to go ahead. This is so awesome. I know. Uh, Men in Black look pretty sweet. Sugar water. Forrest Gump. Edgar. Edgar. Sugar water. <laughs> Forrest, Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. We have two variants. We have him playing ping pong. And him waiting for the... Uh, with the chocolates. I didn't realize his... Now I have to watch the movie again because his shoes are muddy. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That's good. Wow, that's good. Uh, let's go check it out on that. Yeah. Jaws. You see Jaws? Got to get a bigger boot. Jaws looks amazing. Two different actual Jawses. Mm. Jaws I? Jaws. Jaws. Uh, and uh, who is that? It's Quint... Oh, you the know. Sheriff. And to think I just met and Richard Dreyfus. Richard Dreyfus. Oh, Mr. Dreyfus. Listen, I was in Jaws. I have a Funko Pop now. <laughs> I just met Larry. 
Caddyshack. Yeah, you got that going from you, you know, which is nice. <laughs> they got the gopher. They have the gopher. No, 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 Here's what I find weird with pop vinyls. Pretty woman. Yeah. The hooker with the heart of gold. <laughs> oh, my God. Cheech and I Chong? have to get the next one. Cheech, Cheech and Chong. Cheech and Chong. Those are the vinyls. Those are a little different, but still, they look pretty cool. And then the next one. Beverly Hills Cop. Pop one vinyls. One and two. You're not going to fall the banana in the tailpipe. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, oh, Alien. Those are cool. With, oh, um, what's her face? My goodness. Ridley? No, not Ridley. No, what was her yeah, name? Ripley. Ripley, excuse me. Oh, some nice Rick and Morty pops are going to be coming out. The next one. Pickle Rick. Oh, no. The next one. Oh, Jeopardy. This is Jeopardy with and without mustache. No, not only that. Him now and him like 30 years ago. Oh, yeah. He's got the gray hair. The the cur- The current, regular one is him with the gray hair with no mustache. The Chase, which is going to be the hard one to find, and the more expensive one, is him from like 20 years ago. Keep going, though. I see. A little Wheel, Wheel of Fortune, Fortune action. Uh, Vietnam two, veteran two, Pat Sajak. Two, two, Viet, two Vanna Whites. <laughs> two Viets. <laughs> two Vietnams. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's Vanna White in a um, like a silver dress, and the chase is a red dress. Right. Big Bang. Larry. 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 Some new Big Bang Theory. I like them. I love the Penny one. That's the one when she uh, was playing uh, World of Warcraft, and she got all sucked into it. Penny is the hottest by far. The, not Penny. Um. uh Bernadette that? is by far the hottest in the show. I don't know. Penny's been picking up the game. Uh, uh, I didn't like her haircut. Anyway. No, no, not with the short hair, but when it started uh, That's out. what I heard. Um, oh, I like, uh, what's his face in the uh, space suit? Harry. Uh, Harry. Um, t- uh, uh, Wallowitz. Ac- yeah. Uh, uh, billions, I never watched that show. Dawson's Creek. I don't want to wait for our lives to be over. The Office. The Office. Now, there's a bunch of these here in The Office. We have... Michael Scott, Dwight Schrute, we have Kevin, Daryl, we have Jim. Jim, and the chase is Jim from Halloween when he when he went his Facebook. Right, and then Pam. Pam. Wait, there's another page. There is a two-pack with Toby. <laughs> Toby and... And Michael Scott. Michael Scott. No! No! <laughs> uh, did you watch Community? No. Yeah, I wasn't a Community fan either, so we'll keep going. Oh, God. Right. Oh, my God. I need it. You want to do it? I need it. Announce it. Cheers. Oh, my God. I need Cliff Clavin. <laughs> hey, Dan Emmy. And George Went, for a while, was always going to Chiller Theater. Right. I would love him to sign a pop. Now, here's my question, though. They went with Diane, and they didn't go with um, with uh, Rebecca. Well, that's that would be have to be the 10-inch pop. <laughs> oh, wow. 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 Ouch. Right, Shots fired. There. You don't know me. Xena, Warrior Xena. Princess. And who's the one next to him? Hercules. 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 Oh, my right. goodness. Boom. There's a bit. There's a bit. He's holding his heart, too. Lamont, Sanford dummy. and Son. Yep, Sanford and Son. Then we start getting into some of the cartoons. All right. Garfield. SpongeBob with his pineapple yes, under the sea. Under the sea. The Scooby-Doo. I love the Scooby-Doo. <laughs> <laughs> Scooby-Doo with a haunted Rogi. house. Rogi, Rogi, Larry. <laughs> Larry. The Simpsons. Simpsons, a good a good set. We have Radioactive Man, I'm, Bart oh, Man. Oh, Homer and the Moo Moo. Homer and the Moo Moo. I will not be embarrassed. I'll take the Moo Moo. Good Betty Boop as a mermaid. Release the hounds. Boop, doop, beep, doop, boop. Castlevania. You might be excited this is the ca- This is cool. This I want to talk about. Uh, this is the Castlevania from Netflix, the Netflix series. I haven't watched it yet. Oh, it is. It's only two, uh, two seasons, eight, nine, 12 episodes altogether. Phenomenal. I mean, it is like M rated, but it is phenomenal, and it has um, Dracula, Alucard, um, Trevor Belmont, uh, one of the demons, and for the life of me, why am I forgetting her name? Oh my God. Anyway, we'll keep moving on on that one, and then we have some um, some uh, animes, My Hero Academia, uh, Yu Yu Mashuo. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, fairy Tale. Uh, BTS, which is some sort of, uh, I think, a J-pop crew. Backstreet Boys. 
Well, I, I yeah, well, yeah. And Backstreet's back. All right. Uh, Migos, I don't know who that is. I think that's a band. Uh, in sync. Now, yes, I have to get the Joey Fatone one. Oh, that's right. Everyone, my I wife about tells that. us, has everyone convinced that I'm looks like Joey Fatone. I don't see it, but hey, I don't mind. <laughs> you but do the look. problem with that one, he's got red hair in that one. I think he was, yeah, for a little yeah, while. Yeah, back in time, yeah. yeah. I don't know who's next to them, though. Jo- oh, what? I don't know who these two... Uh, Johnny the- Cash. Oh, yeah, that is Johnny Cash. Yeah, one playing the guitar, and one was a guitar uh, around his back. And then finally, with their uh, end of the world tour currently happening... Again... Gene Simmons and Kiss. Oh, how much is he getting paid for that? <laughs> <laughs> so much money. Um, honestly, basically, just go to um, Original Funko or how at Original think, Funko. How much is the Stan Lee uh, Funko go for these now? Oh, that. Um, oh, you kept going. The gold you? one. Yeah, that. Um, we can talk about that real quick. That is the. Where'd it go? Wait, where? where how far back did you go? Uh, it was. It was nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't know. But I saw that one. It was like a gold Funko. I don't know. The one I bought off of our friend who shall not be named uh, sold me one for a good amount. He made out well. So, uh, but yeah, go to uh, Instagram. Oh, that's me trying to get up out of my chair. Uh, Instagram. That's my game show. At so. Original Funko. You can check out all those new Funkos. And we're going to wrap this up. That was a little fun. I just wanted to show all those. That was, that no, was I cool. enjoyed it. I, I'm definitely, actually, uh, uh, Frankie. My cousin, who's been on your show a yep. few times, just went to a um, went to a uh, closing of a comic book store in New Jersey. Did he really? Yes. Oh, um, man. Uh, uh, Eric just said uh, 10 p.m. start tonight, so yeah, we have okay. four That's minutes. That's not happening. Um, so I'm going to find the text. He bought me. I gave him a hundred. I said I'm giving you a hundred dollars wow. to, to go to go nuts on my uh, behalf. I'm trying to find the hoof. text that he sent me. Here it is. Well, while you're doing that, I'll uh, do the shout outs here real quick. Of course, you can check us out uh, Facebook and Instagram at Retro Gamers Podcast. You can email us, email at theretrogamers.com. Of course, our website, theretrogamers.com. And you check out all the other wonderful shows here at the More Family of Podcasts, the Yin and the Yang Podcast every Friday, Talking More Wrestling every Saturday at 6.05 p.m. And Frank, tell us about that other wonderful podcast on the network. Uh, the Better Half Podcast. You could find us uh, all over social media, uh, The Better Half Pod 1 on Instagram. Uh, I shut down the link, so I don't have it memorized. <laughs> uh, 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 Facebook, um, Twitter. Uh, just, just do a search. Just do a search. And uh, also... We are the better half pod one the better at gmail dot com I believe. I think so. So, uh, but you could just find us on all social media. Um, if you want to bother me on Twitter, I'm at uh, mess four one one, and Larry, of course, um, is everywhere at more three sixty five. And all the shows, please give a five star review at Apple Podcasts. So, getting back to that Frankie story real quick, um, you know, I like like. Like Funko Pops, but I like to get the odd ones. Yeah, right? you're, like, so, you're very specific. Right. Like me, and there's for certain a while, movies, certain sale, movies I, I like. Yeah. Certain stuff. So uh, he got me a Ghostbusters. It's the new Ghostbusters uh, Ooh. hearse, the okay. Ecto one. Yeah, uh, the f- pop vinyl. He got me a Taxi Driver, um, Travis Bickle uh, oh, action yes. figure. Not a Funko. But, no, but I've seen those are pretty cool. Right. Uh, he also got me. Unfortunately, he got me the Michael Corleone, which I already had. <laughs> Um, but that's okay. Um, he got me two Walking Deads, another Negan, which I don't have. Different Negan. This one, he's actually holding the bat behind his head. Oh, he's holding Lucille. Okay. And uh, Daryl has the uh, – that one, I just have Daryl Dixon. This is Daryl with uh, – he's Biker Daryl. Okay. Um, he also got me one with um, Negan and Carl Grimes together. Oh wow! So yeah, that's th- that. I don't know oh, if that's, that's cool. rare or not, but it's a two pack. Yeah. Um, and then he also got me two Negan um, action figures, uh, like more like statues. That yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm debating whether or not I should shelf them and display them. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he picked it, oh, and I got all that for literally a hundred dollars even. That's a bit. So so who knows how much he didn't spend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sh- no, no. That's nah. my cousin. He's bloody. He wouldn't do that. So, uh, uh, all right, cool. So we are going to wrap this one up. Boy, this was a marathon. Holy cow! Never doing this again. Uh, <laughs> yeah, two podcasts two, in one two night. Shows back to back that we recorded. Um, but folks, 
Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining us on this ride. Thank you for having me. No, thank you, Frank, truly for uh, sitting in here for Anthony. You know, it's funny. In 2019, we've already done maybe, how many weeks are we into the four, five, what, six weeks six in? Six weeks in. I think me and Anthony have only done two shows so far together. <laughs> All the other ones have had special well, guests. thank God you have me. Absolutely. And folks, check us out. Oh, and one final thing. Thank you, everybody. I mean, no offense, but I wish Anthony was here to celebrate this part. But thank you, everyone, for getting us over 2,000 likes on the Retro Gamers Facebook page. I'm a little jealous. I'm not going to lie. We're going to get there. Don't worry. We will. We lost <laughs> one. But and I lost a follower on Instagram. Oh, sure maybe that's what that it was. Is. Maybe. Um, so thank you very much, everyone, for listening, for, for for enjoying this ride with us. You know, we, we like to bring the nostalgia to you and our love of gaming. And with that, folks, we will catch you right here next week on the Retro Gamers Podcast.